Last week, Barron's Magazine asks, can this bull continue on? Jamie Dimon says we have another 10 years of possible growth. Is this time different? Well, we've heard that one before. We're going to discuss this and much more, so stay tuned. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget, click show more for additional information and links on today's video. Also, if you're looking for a different opinion, that of Wall Street and Big TV, please do consider subscribing. First up, the agenda. We're going to go through the big charts. We're going to look at our signals. What keeps me up at night? Is this time different? What's on my radar? And tweets of the week. Let's go to the big charts. Okay, first up, we're going to start with the S&P daily chart. Going to go quick today. Got a lot to go over. What do we see? Anything if different? Last time I talked about being in a neutral stance, and you can see we pretty much went nowhere. Now, positive. Golden cross, your 50-day above the 200-day moving average. That is a good thing. Down here, volume has been terrible. We do about 2.2 billion shares a day. Last week, we were in the 1516 range. Hadn't seen that since last August when everyone was on vacation. Had a sp spike on Friday with some of the news from one of the banks. Volatility kind of still snuggling up there against the 15. And then last, again, you can see the momentum, which really hasn't gone very far. So I am still in a neutral position right now, short term, with a bias to the negative side, because I think we are in overbought situations right now. Then we take a look at the weekly chart. What do I see here? Well, nothing's really changed. Again, I'm going to say neutral here as well. Right Here's the box that we've been stuck in for quite some time. Nothing different there. Yes, we've had a positive momentum push up, but again, our timeline, we're still below that trend line from 15, 16. I'd like to see us break that. The other thing I mentioned this last video, really starting to see left shoulder, right? Head, right shoulder. Classic head and shoulders. And that generally is a setup to go down. Looking at it, not convinced yet. So right now, midterm is neutral. How about our long-term view? We're going to take a look here at the monthly chart. What do we see? Well, the big thing is momentum is still below, negative. Okay, so that puts me in a negative view because you can see, right, 15, 16, 08, 2000, each other time we've had that, we know what's happened there. The other thing is the negative divergence here, right, in relative strength. You have a series of lower highs while the market's gone up. Not a good sign. So long-term signal right now is negative. So neutral, neutral, and then the last one is going to be negative. Let's take a quick look at bonds. Not much happening here last week. Well, actually, let me take that back. A lot happened in last week. We went long treasuries back in late fall. Good move. We went down to about 230 on the 10 year, cut our position in half as we went into this quarter. And as you can see over here, 256 on the 10 year. So we've had a big push up. Not surprising with some CPI news last week. I do anticipate that to go lower, not just yet. The other big thing is yield curve, 10-year treasury minus two-year, holding its own at 0.16. <gasps> Next up, what keeps me up at night from our friends at Hedgeye. I love their cartoons, their data even better, and they're talking about the cycle, right? So, blinded by love, tech stocks rise to record highs despite forecast profit designs. Economic growth trends, what do we have? Emerging markets in yellow, 
United States G10, all pointing downwards. Next up, debt. Debt to GDP. We're getting to all-time high levels again, and this is nothing like the past. So again, another concern. So last thing before I go on to what keeps me up at night, is this time different? So we go back to 2001, 2002, okay? And I've talked about earnings matter. And if he zooms in here, you can take a look, right? We kind of peaked in Q1, 2000, okay? Q2, 18.2, and then earnings started declining until we got to negative. And that's the S&P at, at the high. That's actually your sales growth and that's your earnings per share, per share growth. Same thing, and you see all those negatives. So when you look at that, is it different this time? Well, here's Karen. Difficult to see, I know. I'll have Andrew zoom in, or I'll put it on top. So here we're going back to 16. Now, is this different from 15, 16? Yeah, because we were rising in earnings coming out of that time, but you go over here, sales growth, okay, is starting to go down. Projection, 8, 6, 4. Okay, so we're going down. S&P earnings per share growth peaked at 24, 24, 12 in Q4, 2018, minus 9 projected for first quarter 2009. So no, that picture's not different. Each time we saw a earnings recession, the market did pull over. So now let's address the question, is this time different? So I put together a series of charts going back in time, 2000, 2008, and of course our current. This is your unemployment rate, okay? You hit a low, you hit a peak in the market. A low, a peak in the market. A low, possibly, a peak in the market, so it looks very similar. The other thing is, going back, I talk about this head and shoulders. Hopefully, Andrew can zoom in. You can see it right there as well, going back to 2008. So then, is this different? Here's industrial production. Same thing. I'm going back to 1995. We peak in 2000 and roll over. We peak in 2008. We roll over. We have peaked in 2019 and it roll over. So it's not different, okay, yet. I'm not saying anything is happening, but when I look at this, it still gives me pause. So how about new home sales? I would say this is one of the more positive charts. You can see rate of change down here, right? You've got your peak, okay, you come down eventually. Kind of a uh, lagging indicator. So. New home sales continue to look pretty strong on the charts. Now, how about the S&P relative to CPI, inflation? And that's what this is. So we take the price of the S&P relative to the CPI, and you can see it here. What's happened, as soon as it breaks a trend line, it goes down. That's in 95, peaked in 2000. 2002 broke its trend line and went down. Here's our trend line. We broke it. Where are we going from here? That is, give me my dot there, that's the big question on that one. And then the last but not least, here's the S&P over the long term. 93, right? So we got in a bull market in 95. You see the breakout, 63 months, 1,000 points. Then we come back down in 02, 03, 700 points over 60 months. This is the longest we've seen, 2,227 2, points in 117 months. You're darn right, this is different because it's gone a long, long time, goes up, consolidates. These two, when you look again, right? So those two are peaks, and then up here was your big breakout. So it's different. Does it mean anything? To be determined. So next up, what's on my radar? 
Couple things here. I cut my position in treasuries, cut my position in gold. As we've talked in the past, we're still utilities. We're also in REITs. Healthcare, which had a tough week last week. We do have some in the S&P for some high growth. But as I discussed last video, our big addition was we split out oil. As you can see, the oil chart here looks really good, setting ourselves up for a golden cross went above the 200-day moving average there, and then consolidated. Not surprising at all on that. So at this point, really like oil down here is volatility when it's below 30. Good time to buy. You see it at 25. And I split it up. So I doubled my position, went from the big companies and oil price itself. Both of those are done through an ETF that you can search for. The other big addition was the communication sector, okay? Communication services sector. I'll have a link for it below. This was a new sector created last year. As you can see, not with new companies. It's got some tried and true communication companies, but also has some tech service companies. Those who are doing subscription-based, like this, it gives me a little more equity exposure without the risk, and we still have some upside potential. So we added this last week as well. See a little bit of a consolidation after a breakout, not surprising, but we do like this overall. Next up, we have tweets of the week. First up, Christopher Baroud. He comes from overseas. I like his stuff, comes out early in the morning. The world economy will grow at 3.3% this year, down from 3.5%. The IMF had forecasts for 2019. This is the weakest since 2009. Carl Quintanella from CNBC from criticizing the Fed big fat ugly bubble when they had QE4. Now President Trump is the absolute opposite. Absolutely obsessed with this market. Last week he's talking about lowering rates and QE. Holy moly would that be a bad decision. Wrapping things up. Fear and greed, as you can see, 48 two weeks ago, 74, okay, this week, pretty strong. That gives you that push we're talking about why I think we're a little bit overbought. As always, thanks so much for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.